Okay, audio test. So one of the worst things that you can do on your trip to Peru is You are watching the Trip Travel Gear YouTube channel. We are a travel gear brand that sells packing gear. And so this is a very packing centralized video, but I do have a lot of travel tips along the way. So let's get started by talking about how you're getting to Peru. So you might be stopping in Lima first, and if you're taking advantage of a layover there in Lima, don't have the misconception that you're heading into a tropical climate. Yes, Lima is right there on the Pacific Ocean, but I would anticipate weather that's closer to San Francisco during the summer rather than the Colombian Caribbean. It will probably be pretty temperate during the day, but chilly at night with with the wind blowing off the Pacific Ocean. All right, so we've got kind of like airplane wear and a casual upscale Lima dinner. Now, because it was a short flight, I was wearing something like this on the plane, sleeves, my extra jacket for the trip, and either maybe like a dark pair of sweatpants or my jeans. If you're trying to get all of your Peru clothes into a carry-on. Of course, wearing your largest items on the plane is the biggest hack for that, which you of course already know. Now let's head over to Cusco where you're gonna be spending most likely most of your time. Cusco is above 11,000 feet. It is so high that it frequently will be on the cooler side than the warmer side. What that means for you is lots and lots of layers. Like any place in the mountains that you would be heading, it might be really warm in the sun during the day, but then very cold at night. In June, we were there and it was in the 30s at night. So it gets almost down to, to freezing sometimes. So first, how can you approach packing? Well, I like to think through my entire itinerary of a trip before I even start. And that's why I've kind of been chronologically in this video so far going into the trip. Machu Picchu, while also high, is lower in elevation than Cusco and it's also kind of more out in the jungle. Lots more moisture there, a little bit more humidity in the air, and anything that you would need that was maybe water resistant would be there at Machu Picchu. Now it's time to dive into the actual articles of clothing. And we always recommend organizing your clothing and outfits each in its own packing cube. So this is our XL compression cube set our XL size would be best for a place like Peru because that you have lots of larger knit items that are folded easier in a larger packing cube size. In a smaller size, it would just kind of get chunky and bulky. This, you can still lay everything pretty flat and keep everything really compressed to maximize your luggage space and hopefully not have to pay for that check bag. If you're thinking through your outfits, you already are wearing your airplane outfit. So you can pull that out of your closet and set it aside, but you don't need to pack it in your suitcase. You know what I will say? It's very common to hike to Machu Picchu on like a four day trek. If you are trekking on this trip, you are bringing much more technical clothing than what I'm recommending here. This is more of like a Peruvian vacation wardrobe. If you're trekking to Machu Picchu, weight is an issue and comfort is an issue. And you're essentially bringing almost all technical clothes for that. So in that case, our six piece compression cube set will get you packed down. And I would just say less is more. Now, if you're just on vacation to Peru and you're going to Machu Picchu and you are taking the train and the bus up to see the ruins, it is actually a very casual trip. There's very minimal hiking involved, which I was surprised to see. You're essentially dropped off at the entrance. You will meander around through the ruins, but nothing more than, you know, maybe walking two kilometers uh, around. So it is very, it's not very technical at all. So with that in mind, it's not like you need to wear all athletic gear in order to be comfortable to visit Machu Picchu. You would be completely comfortable in 
jeans, a t-shirt, and some tennis shoes. So if you are just consider yourself like a very simple packer, outfit planner, jeans, t-shirt, tennis shoes, you'll be comfortable, you'll be happy, you won't be missing out on anything. For my Instagram, anybody, girl, guy who is there for their picture in front of Machu Picchu, and you have some shoes or outfit ideas that you want to consider, you'll probably be fine as well. Again, because you don't have to like hike four miles to get there and then have the outfit of your dreams. In front of Machu Picchu, you can um, really wear whatever you want to wear. Um, if you're looking for this spot, there's some big rocks right here that you can put your camera on. Wow, we went from not finding the spot this morning to now here's your hot tip. <laughs> this is hot, hot camera tip. You've probably, in that regard, you've probably seen lots of fun patterns and print in lots of Peruvian Machu Picchu pi pictures. And there are lots of knits like this available just about everywhere in Peru, in front of monuments, in the city center, like at the airport, just about everywhere. So there's fun things like sweaters and the ever so popular Peruvian poncho. Peru just seems like one of those places where a lot of people are really into buying that as a souvenir and all the tourists are walking around with all their, a lot of them have the same pattern. So everyone's all like matching walking around, but that kind of makes it fun. Like there's guys that are walking around in ponchos and shorts and hiking boots. It's kind of like Thailand back in the day when everybody had the elephant pants. Now I feel like Peru, everyone's got the, the knit sweater. All right. So once you have your Machu Picchu outfit all sorted out, and it might be that you're just leaving room because you want to buy one of those souvenirs while you're there, you can throw that into a packing cube and plop that into your suitcase. If you went the jeans, t-shirt, sweater route for Machu Picchu, then I would additionally recommend that you do bring some type of athletic wear outfit. Ladies, some you know, leggings, a sports bra, and maybe a base layer top or and an athletic t-shirt top. And guys, if you've got some multi-purpose hiking pants, maybe you wore that on the plane, um, or you're planning on doing some more in-depth hiking, like out to Humanite Lake or something like that, then definitely you'll want at least one packing cube of athletic wear outfits. Now the cube that you can put that into in the XL set, you won't need an extra large cube for your athletic wear because it's so physically small. The XL set also comes with a small cube and a large cube. If you're a larger male and bringing more of like a sweatshirt and hiking pants, you could put that in your large cube. And ladies, we kind of have the benefit here because leggings and things like that are so small, fit that right into a small cube. If you haven't noticed already, a lot of my clothes match on every trip that I'm going on because it's really just easier that way. Weather changes, you end up doing an activity you weren't expecting, and then you can swap out different articles of clothing in different outfits that you brought, um, as opposed to having like a maroon and light blue pieces. Everything's in the same color family when I go on a trip. Oh, I whipped out this hat before I didn't mention. I'm usually in a lot of hats when we travel and I was anticipating since they're made of wool to find um, some nice wool hats while I was there. And I didn't really see so many in Peru. There were some, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't really like one of the hot things to buy. So if you do want a nice wool hat, I would recommend bringing it instead of planning on purchasing one there. Now, if you think about it, we're in a pretty good spot. You had an outfit on the plane that is probably pretty universal that you can wear around to lunch, dinner, things like that. You've got your Machu Picchu dream outfit <laughs> packed away and you've got your athletic wear. You probably can get through the majority of your trip. So what else do I deem an essential? I don't know if this is like essential, essential, but it's important. Okay, this is important. This is, it's a, this is redundant. As you can just physically see before my explanation, this is a little redundant what I have here. But I'm gonna tell you why I'm so excited that I had all four of these pieces of clothing. Now this is very boring and monochromatic. 
but I have a turtleneck sweater and sweater joggers. And I have this essentially the same exact thing in a sweatshirt and sweatpants. Let's say that's extreme. We were there for three weeks, you know, but let's say even I just had one of these. Remember I told you that it's cold altitude can just feel cold that even if you're out in the hot sun, you might walk into the shade and the breeze is cold coming through the mountains. It's cold. The minute the sun goes down at, you know, at six o'clock, well, actually, if the sunset is six o'clock, it could be 4.30 and all of a sudden the sun is behind the tip of the mountain and now it's cold. But most importantly, a lot of our accommodations that we stayed at were cold. Airbnbs, hotels, no matter where we were staying, it seemed to be very uncommon that there would be heat in the buildings. Um, many of the Airbnbs either didn't have heat at all had heat restrictions, like, like times that the heater in the building would come on. Um, and in some hotels, it wasn't implied. And if we asked about it, that they would bring an electric space heater into the room. So that just out of the get go surprised me. So anytime that we weren't actively out doing something and in the hotel room, like at, in the evening showering before going to dinner or in the morning getting dressed, it was very cold inside. So that's kind of why I'm glad I had this sweatsuit set because I actually lived in this our entire Peru trip. trip. Everything that was not doing something was in a sweatsuit set. I usually travel more dressed up like this, but if you travel in sweats, then, then wear your coziest, warmest, favorite sweats on the airplane, and then you'll just have that already um, in Peru with you. We were staying at some, I mean, we were staying at some budget places, but then we were also staying at some nicer, um, hotels and resorts like um, right up on Machu Picchu. You can check out our thousand verse a hundred staying at Machu Picchu in the luxury property there. But I knew that I was going to be going to breakfast and things like that in nice hotels. So instead of just wandering around Peru in the same sweatpants I was living in, I had this nicer sweater set. Now stick around to the end of the video because I'm also going to tell you the number one essential item that I am so happy that I had with us on our trip. Last but oh so certainly not least, you will most likely, hopefully, need a bathing suit in Peru. Why is that? There are some great hot springs if you're getting a little bit more off the beaten path over in Colco Canyon region, but there are also hot springs right outside Machu Picchu. I know. You can learn fun tips like that in our thousand versus a hundred video again, but um, Aguas Calientes is the name of the town that you will leave from to head up to Machu Picchu. And Aguas Calientes in Espanol means hot water. So it's, it's um, a town with hot springs. You can head out there and um, you'll need your bathing suit for that. Our XL set comes with what we call our shoe bag. This is, <laughs> my favorite cube because of how it sits and the zipper access and you can just kind of keep stuffing stuff in there. So I use this for socks, underwear, pajamas, just kind of all those things that you just put in a drawer in your room. This is like my drawer in my suitcase. Ugh, shoes are always such a bummer because they take up so much space in your luggage, right? And usually, the most comfortable shoes to wear on the plane are also the smallest and easiest to pack and the least comfortable shoes to wear on the plane are the largest to bring. So I'm constantly in the, that same balance state as well. This was one of the first adventure trips that a hiking boot really wasn't that necessary. Um, I did bring this, but I'm not recommending that you do because this was redundant, or if you just want the hiking boots. But I was excited that I had like a, a boot that I was excited to wear as an outfit choice because so often do I have to be in like hiking uh, clothes for an adventure. But this was just very easy to navigate. 
So how do you pack shoes? If you're like me and you want to uh, optimize being comfortable on the plane, a lightweight sneaker is so very comfortable to wear. So here's our hack. We're going to pack some things inside the shoe and then pack the shoe inside a cube to protect the rest of the bag. For example, I have, this is like a large one piece bathing suit. Maybe you've got some socks or some underwear, but I don't want my, my socks uh, honestly are fine, but my underwear, my bathing suit, I don't want to shove into my boot. So I'm going to put it in our tube cube for protection. Then I'm going to stuff it in the boot. Okay, then the dusty, gross boot that we're walking around all day in is going to go into a cube itself. And I have a very large size 11 woman's boot. It's like a men's nine. And the two boots can fit into one of our large cubes and they also work great in the laundry cinch sack. Now I have a fully stuffed cube with stuffed boots to go into my piece of luggage. One more quick tip, then I'm gonna tell you my favorite thing that I brought. Um, I, I don't know if it's like just me. I hate wind, like, I don't know. In my ears, it just, it, get, it makes me claustrophobic and I kind of freak out. Well, being um, at elevation and out hiking and things, there's, it's gonna be really windy. I was so excited that I just had a regular old handkerchief. We didn't go out to Rainbow Mountain, but that would probably be the windiest place that you might head. And speaking of, this is why I brought it up as a travel tip, uh, Rainbow Mountain is one of the highest in altitude places that you can go. So one of the worst things that you can do on your trip to Peru is to head right to Cusco and then head right to the Rainbow Mountain. That would be the biggest travel fail of going to Peru is like the first thing that you do, go to Rainbow Mountain because um, it would be best to work your way up to elevation and then Rainbow Mountain is the highest. So if it's one of the last things that you do, that, that would be better. Now, drum roll, please. The, my favorite thing that I brought to Peru was a pair of slippers. I don't know, these are so ugly, but <laughs> they're like, they're down slippers. They're used for, in the winter, for skiers. So I have them for that. But I like my sweatpants set lived in these even more than that. The floors are so cold when there's no heat in the building, <laughs> the floor is cold. And this was just so, so wonderful um, to have. I wish you all the best on your upcoming trip to Peru. Before you leave, check out our show, Thousand Verse 100 on our Tim and Finn YouTube channel. We're approaching Machu Picchu in two different ways, really highlighting what you can do on different budgets in order to see one of the seven wonders of the world. And we have another video in Peru, rugged Peru, where we are driving for three weeks all throughout the country, exploring some of the top sites. The extra large compression cube set that you saw featured in today's video is available in a link below. We're a small business trip travel gear that sells exclusively on Amazon and you can find it there in multiple different colors and patterns. Buen viaje!